Let's just say you have $8,000 burning a hole in your pocket, as my dad would say. What kind of a computer would that get you on both the Apple and PC side of the fence? In this video, you're gonna find out. What's up, my friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to SR Lounge. This video is Apple versus PC 2020 edition. For this test, here is the premise. And while I explain it, cue up the beautiful B-roll. Now, most of you know that comparing Apple to PC in general, you're gonna get more hardware and performance value for your dollar on the PC side. But those that love Apple, and I have to say myself included in this, we appreciate Apple's overall operating system, its ecosystem, and the experience that we have. But here's the thing, I wanted to strip all that away. Let's strip away the ecosystem piece and I just wanna compare performance at the same purchase price. I was curious to see how significant of a difference there would be, particularly when comparing the Apple to a high quality PC system builder. Okay, so why Puget? Well, finding good PCs for us has always been a struggle. Look, on the Apple side, when it comes to their products, there's a lot of forethought. They're generally built quite well. Well, for the most part, with the exception of the past few years and keyboard issues. But outside of that, Apple's product design is brilliant. And not only is the Mac Pro beautiful, if you slide it open the case, you're gonna notice there's not a single cable inside. Inside, outside, its appearance to its internal design, it's absolutely a thing of beauty. On top of that, the components used inside of Apple computers, from the hardware to the displays, are generally quite good. On the PC side, you just don't see this as much. They just don't have anywhere near the same design forethought that goes into Apple products. And on top of that, they're often using incredibly cheap components and hardware pairings. Now in recent years, I have had some personally bad experiences with Apple, but even then, I can still say that across our entire company's experience, Apple products generally hold up better in quality and reliability than our store-bought PCs. That is until we found Puget Systems a couple years back. So Puget specializes in crafting purpose-built PCs. On the design side, we're not really seeing anything to write home about. And if you were to put these both on the table next to each other, like so, you can quickly see which computer you'd probably want sitting on your desk, visible to everybody coming around you, and which computer I'd probably want underneath the desk and hidden from view. From the aesthetic standpoint, Apple wins this contest hands down. But what about the quality and performance of the overall design? Well, I asked Puget to build me a flagship machine that would be a content creator's dream. I wanted it to be able to masterfully be able to handle raw processing from high megapixel cameras, as well as a 4K raw production workflow for video. They designed out and built this machine that would set me back $8,000. Now, while it's nothing to look at on the outside, the components used within are all tested for reliability, compatibility, and purpose-built performance. In fact, at the time of recording this video, the CPU inside of this is actually the AMD 3970X Threadripper with 32 cores. It's actually the first time that we've put an AMD into one of our high-end production systems. And this CPU alone costs $2,000 right now if I were to get it off the shelf, at the time of this video, of course. Now remember, in this comparison, this is all about what $8,000 would get me. So at this point, I went onto the Apple site and specced out this Mac Pro, which would cost the same amount. I know the components are different. Once again, we're comparing the same price point, not the same hardware. But just so you know, to get this Apple specced similarly to the Puget, we're looking at over $16,000 with taxes. So I didn't get a lot of upgrades in before I hit that $8,000 mark. But here they are side by side and we'll put up the specs so you guys can let it soak in. Now listen, my PC tech friends, I know what you're about to say. Why would you buy those machines when you can build it for far less? I know, we all know, but saying that is kind of much like saying, why would you buy a car when you can just build one yourself? A lot of people don't know how to build their own computers. 
they don't care to learn, and then there's just the rest of us that really have no interest in spending our time building a computer. So let's scratch that entire argument and let's just look at two high quality machines priced at the same amount. Test number one was Lightroom. So we took the exact same test catalog, we filled it with 161 megapixel whoppers from the Sony a7R IV just to give each machine raw files that it could churn through, you know, really sink their teeth into. Both computers were set to the same resolution. We started each test with a fresh catalog and all the same catalog settings were used. To be safe, we actually ran each test multiple times and averaged the results to ensure accuracy. Now, our first test was to render smart previews right after the initial import. The Puget took an average of 17.4 seconds while the Mac Pro landed at almost 22 seconds, 21.8 to be exact. Puget won this test by 25.3%. The next test we rendered one-to-one -one previews from a fresh catalog. Puget landed at 70.3 seconds while the Mac Pro came in at 85 seconds. Again, Puget won by just over 20% in speed. From there, we tested image to image lag in the develop module. Now this is a big one because this is your active development time, the time that you spend in front of the computer. We wanted to see how quickly each computer could move from image to image, apply develop adjustments, see the results, and then move to the next image to do the same thing. For this test, we applied the Visual Flow Crush Pack HDR preset over each 61 megapixel RAW file to give each machine something intense to churn through. For the 100 images, the Puget took on average 1.96 seconds from image to image, whereas the Mac Pro landed at 2.32 seconds. It was an 18% difference that I found visibly noticeable as I watched the Mac Pro kind of lag and stumble behind my keystrokes. From there, we tested the export. So with the HDR preset now applied, we took all 100 images and exported it to the same print resolution settings. Once again, the Puget won by 15%, taking 314 seconds compared to the Mac Pro's 361 seconds. Finally, we come to disk transfer speed. We transferred the 100 RAW files, which was 5.42 gigabytes worth of information, from the same USB-C SSD straight to the desktop of each machine. We've always appreciated Apple's disk speed and transfer performance, and here it didn't disappoint. Both machines were blazingly quick, but on average, that transfer took the Apple 12.1 seconds versus the Puget's 13.7 seconds. Both were quick, but the Mac beat out by 13%. Overall, still in Lightroom, I'd much rather be working on the Puget, but that's kind of to be expected since Lightroom itself really isn't designed for multi-threaded performance. We're looking at kind of overall clock speed of the CPU, in which case we do expect better performance out of that Threadripper. Test two, Premiere. Again, for all of our Premiere tests, we're using the exact same project, folder, settings, everything. We began our first test with importing 100 gigs worth of footage. For this test, the Puget beat out the Mac Pro by around 22%. It averaged 21.2 seconds to import compared to 26.6 seconds on the Mac. Then we move to our second test, a heavy duty render test. We took a complex timeline using two by two split screen with 4K 60 footage, applied the same adjustment layers to each, and on the final test, we even reversed the clips to play backwards. We ran this test multiple times because we were shocked at the difference. The Puget completed this task about 4.6 or 460% faster than the Mac Pro. It took an average of 260 seconds on this side compared to an average of 1,208 seconds on the Mac. Again, this is kind of to be expected with a 32 core Threadripper high-end CPU compared to the 12 cores on the Mac side, but that's all we could get for that price. Now we move to export. When exporting the project with the same settings on both machines, the Puget took 259 seconds compared to the Mac Pro, which averaged around 242 seconds. Oddly, we landed at the Mac Pro being 6.3% faster in this instance, likely due to not being able to utilize all the cores on each of the CPUs. Next, we did a practical playback and scrub test. We used 5.5K raw footage from a 1DX3 and with as well as without LUTs, we tested playback. So with that 5.5K raw footage, both computers had a hard time with smooth playback without first rendering out the clip. Moving down to 4K 60 footage with and without LUTs, 
the Puget could maintain skipless playback at full resolution without rendering. While on the Mac Pro side, we had to move down to one half resolution to be able to get skipless playback without rendering out the clip. Finally, when warp stabilizing 5.5K raw footage as well as 4K 60 footage, we noticed that the Mac Pro was a bit faster, again, by around 2.5% on average. Now we get to test number three. This is Cinebench. Cinebench is a cross-platform test suite which tests overall hardware performance, particularly when it comes to 3D modeling, animation, motion graphics, and rendering performance. Ran on each machine with the same settings. Here was the result after running the test three times on each computer, again, because we didn't believe the results. When it comes to single core applications where clock speed rules, this is like Lightroom and Photoshop, the Puget landed at a score of 505, while the Mac Pro landed around 397. This meant that the Puget was outperforming the Mac Pro by about 21%. So it's interesting because it confirmed the real world results that we saw when we were testing Lightroom. For our multi-core applications, this is like Premiere, rendering, 3D modeling, CAD, etc. The Puget averaged a score of 17,316 compared to the Mac Pro's kind of chintzy 5,451. Now this represented a massive 317% difference, which was likely the cause for that huge discrepancy in that premier rendering test. In terms of MP ratio, the Puget scored an average of 34.3, with the Mac scoring again with an underwhelming 13.7 a 250% difference in performance. Okay, so overall results. Well, I think it's pretty straightforward. I only have it in the budget to keep one of these machines and it's gonna be the Apple. You're just too pretty. I'm just kidding. Look, it's not gonna be the Mac Pro. I'm gonna return this guy. We're gonna do a separate video discussing the merits of Windows versus OS X because here's the thing, I do still prefer OS X, but not at such a massive performance cost. The difference for the money is too significant. Having the Puget in production, everything runs so buttery smooth. The performance gain on this side is far more significant than I would have thought, and it's not something that I'm willing to give up. So for my money, Puget's gonna win this hands down. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was entertaining as well as a bit informative. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so I can see you all back here next week. And be sure to comment below and let me know what you guys think and what videos you guys want us to create next. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Before we send it back, before we send it back, I just wanna... No. Okay, send it back.